India Radio. In the program Spotlight, we now bring you a discussion on peace, security and development in the northeastern states. The participants are P.J. Badua, political analyst, and Ashwini Shivastav, journalist. The government of India is taking great effort in ensuring peace, security and development of the northeastern states. Many initiatives like promotion of self-help groups, startups, construction of roads, ensuring availability of drinking water and electricity round the clock, augmentation of health infrastructure and creation of jobs are being done by the center. Before we discuss more on this, Baruaji, let us first talk about Prime Minister Narin Modi's visit to Assam today, where he dedicated to the people a cancer care center in Debrugarh and laid foundation stone of other health care facilities. What are the key takeaways from the Prime Minister's visit today? Very memorable visit today of the Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Assam. A very hectic schedule, starting from a visit to Difu, the headquarters of the Hill District of Karbi Anglong. There, the Prime Minister laid the foundation stone of a veterinary college, agriculture college, and an institute of higher education. And he welcomed in that meeting the members of the underground organizations of as many as six extremist outfits who had surrendered, and their number came to around 1,000, and they have joined the mainstream of the surrendering their weapons. He assured them that the, they will be rehabilitated and they should take part in the development process of the state. This is a big fillip to the peace and development atmosphere that is prevailing today in Assam. Since the coming of the BJP government in 2014, a wind of change has been blowing in Assam and the northeastern part of the country. And this is a very welcome change. We have seen tremendous development during this period, especially in the field of connectivity, where new roads have been built, where new bridges are coming up, Rail connectivity has been extended even up to Manipur, Arunachal Pradesh, and even the Mizoram. So there's a tremendous activity along with expansion of airports all over the northeastern state. This connectivity is bringing the northeastern part of the country closer to the Indian mainland. Added to this, a big fillip has been given by the central government for development of the border areas bordering China. This is a very welcome development on the part of the NDA government led by Narendra Modi. Well, unlike the policy of the earlier governments in the center where development of border areas was neglected, the coming of the NDA government has witnessed tremendous activity in the border areas in the form of roads development, bridges, and other connectivity avenues. We are improving supply of goods to the army camps on the border for smooth movement of the border army personnel. As many as four bridges of the over the Brahmaputra has been constructed. New bridges are coming up. New roads are being opened. So there is tremendous activity in the northeast for the last one decade, and this has brought tremendous change. The alienation of the people of the Northeast has been gradually coming down, and we're seeing young people taking part in the development activities and trying to connect with the Indian mainland. This is a very positive change that is coming over the Assam and Northeast. Right. In Assam especially, we are seeing tremendous changes. Even during the last two years of the COVID pandemic, the Assam government has put up a very brave show by developing overnight infrastructure facilities to combat the COVID menace. And this has greatly reduced the fatality rate besides providing medical facilities to the affected people. And this has been warmly welcomed by the people at large for the sincere efforts that has been displayed by the Himanta Bishwa Sarma government in the state. Apart from that, there is tremendous efforts being made to solve the unemployment problem in the state, to give open up more employment avenues in the form of agricultural pursuits, more opening of small and medium-scale industries, startup ventures. So 
the window opportunities is opening up. This is a very welcome sign. In the form of education also, new colleges, new professional colleges, new universities are coming up, encouraging the young people to pursue higher education. And apart from that, a number of social welfare activities have been undertaken in Assam in the last few years, bringing relief to the aged elderly people, to widows, to even daughters who have remained unmarried and the weaker sections at large. Barwaji, that's a very important thing. But Prime Minister also dedicated to the people a new cancer care center in Debrugar. That This center is built in collaboration with the Tata Sun. How right. this uh, center is important, uh, not only for Assam, but for the neighboring states, if you can briefly talk about this. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today inaugurated seven new cancer hospitals across the state of Assam. This is a very welcome initiative which has been implemented with the collaboration of Tata Trust. Uh, present in the meeting today was the managing director of Tata Trust, Mr. Ratan Tata, along with his senior officials, Chief Minister of Assam, Himanta Bishu Sharma, former Chief Minister and Union Minister of Ports and Shipping, Mr. Sarbananda Shanwal, Governor of Assam, Mr. Professor Jagdish Mukhi, among others. It's a very welcome initiative on the part of the government and the Tata Trust to well, set up these hospitals in a state and a region where the incidence of cancer is the highest in the country. A lot of patients, numbering into hundreds, go out every year, every day, month, to hospitals like Tata Memorial Hospital in Mumbai or Valor or Chennai for cancer treatment. Now, with the opening of these hospitals in Assam, the infrastructure facilities with sophisticated equipments will be at hand to treat the cancer patients of the state. This will also help the patients coming from neighboring states of Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram, Meghalaya, Manipur, Nagaland, among others. In fact, the small state of Mizoram has the highest number of cancer cases in India. So this will help these patients for, for early detection of cancer and treatment in the coming day. Apart from patients from the, the Northeast, the infrastructure facilities that are coming up for cancer treatment in Assam in the coming days will also prove to be a center of cancer treatment for patients coming from other South Asian countries like Burma, the Myanmar, Bangladesh, Thailand, or Lagos. So all these uh, countries of Southeast Asia can also take help of the facilities that are coming up in Assam. So right. in fact, today the Prime Minister, while inaugurating this project in Dibruga, has said there was a time when one hospital was set up in one month in the country. But today, as many as seven hospitals are being set up in a single day today. So this is the change that is being taking place. Yeah, Barwaji, the Prime Minister also addressed the Peace, Unity and Development Rally at Deepu in Karbi Anglong District, where he mm. mentioned a lot of matters concerning the people of Northeast, be it the controversial mm. AFSPA, that is Armed Forces Special Powers Act, projects mm. of Amrit Sarovar, double engine mm. growth, Bodo Accord, mm. and the recent agreement signed between Assam and Meghalaya, which you also talked about. These mm. all matters was also talked about uh, Prime Minister and, you know, about AFSPA, he specifically said that during the last eight years, the government has revoked this controversial act from many areas of Northeast due to peace and better law and order conditions. How do you see this assertion by the Prime Minister? The Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, while addressing the rally at DFO today, has outlined his government's initiative in bringing peace, stability and development in the Northeast. He has very rightly pointed out that with the ushering in of peace in the Northeast region, the controversial Armed Forces Special Power Act of 1958, which has been implemented in Assam and the Northeast for long years, has been withdrawn partially from several areas where peace has come back. 
So only in some very areas where there's apprehension of violence and disturbance of peace, this act is still on. Apart from that, he has also pointed out the initiative taken by the center along with the state governments of Assam and Meghalaya and others to resolve the interstate border disputes. In a big initiative on the part of the center, the prime minister today opened a scheme of this wetland development. As many as 5,000 wetlands will be developed in Assam in the coming days where multipurpose activities like fishery, tourism activities, and other allied activities will be carried out, ushering big change in the production of fishery development, tourism, and other developmental activities in these areas. This will also add to the flora and fauna and the protection of environment in the state. This has been widely welcomed by the people because Assam, as you know, is a land where there's a lot of rainfall, where there are a lot of water bodies which needs protection and development. And this action on the part of the center and the government's prime minister's inaugural today of this scheme will greatly help in ushering an era of change in this front. Apart from that, the prime minister has also pointed out that uh, of the Jal Jivan mission, to bring drinking water to the doorsteps of the people. And this has already started being implemented in various districts of the state. And the Prime Minister, you know, during his address also mentioned about the great son of Assam, that is Lachit Bodhukan. And he comes from the Karbi Onglong only. If you could briefly talk about him and what's so important about Prime Minister mentioning about uh, him during his address. Well, actually, Lashid Barfakan is the national hero of Assam. In fact, he is not from Karbi Anglong, the, which is a hill district. Actually, Lashid Barfakan was a general of the Ahom Kingdom, okay. which had uh, ruled Assam for 600 long years from 1228 with the coming of the first Ahom ruler, Sukafa, from across the Patkai Hills from some place in, from China and Myanmar side. So he established the Ahom Kingdom in 1228, and the Ahoms slowly consolidated their power in Assam by bringing all the different tribes and communities living at that time under their fold. And the Ahom Kingdom was continued for 600 years, till there, but it was, Assam was annexed by the British, in 1826 under the Treaty of Yandabo. Lassit Barfukon is famous and widely respected in Assam as a national hero mm -hmm. because in 1661, during the Battle of Saraighat, you understand that we have the Battle of Saraighat bridge over the river Bomoputra in Guwahati. That's right. So this the bridge has been named after Saraighat, the battleground okay. mm -hmm. where the Lassit Burfokan and his uh, army of Ahom uh, soldiers defeated the mighty Mughals who had come to invade Assam under Mir Jumdar Jai Singh, Jai Singh, who was a senior general of Aurangzeb at that time. Yeah, Barwaji, you rightly mentioned um, the, so many initiatives which are being taken by the center and the efforts being taken by the Assam government in particular. Mm -hmm. The Prime Minister in his speech concluded by saying or assuring the people of Assam that he will repay their love and affection with interest and rededicated himself for the continued development of the region. These words are not only for Assam, but for the entire northeastern region. Thank you so much for talking to us. Barwaji, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on peace, security and development in the northeastern states. The participants were P.J. Barwa, political analyst, and Ashwini Srivastava, journalist. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.